there's been a renewed interest uh, within the community regarding aviation and leaded emissions from general aviation. At Lewis University, we've been very forward thinking on uh, research projects regarding that very topic. How can we mitigate the amount of lead that's being put out in the atmosphere uh, by general aviation? Uh, one of our early studies uh, that was published in 2012 partnered with local industry. So Swift Enterprises or Swift Fuels out of Indiana partnered with us to measure emissions from leaded fuel and then from their proposed unleaded fuel uh, and to measure the effect of these uh, emissions to calculate how long we'd have to run an engine and this engine that I'm standing by is one of the test engines used in that study to determine what we would termed lead memory. How long will it take if we run an engine that has been running on this leaded fuel in aviation uh, with the new proposed unleaded fuel uh, before we would stop seeing lead in the emissions. And the results of that study showed it takes just over 20 minutes of run engine runtime and then we stop seeing lead emissions. So this is a very good example of a study where Lewis University is supporting efforts to move to an unleaded fuel for aviation. Another study that was uh, when aviation partnered with biology to look at the amount of lead that's in the soil near general aviation airports, where aircraft operate that burn this 100 low lead, high octane aviation fuel, typically referred to as avgas in our industry. And what we determined from that study was while there might be slightly elevated levels of lead in the soil near an airport, it was nowhere near the amount of lead uh, that the EPA requires remediation for. So while there is some lead in the soil, uh, it wasn't uh, what we determined uh, to be beyond the EPA measures. And that study further supported efforts to uh, partner with industry, to partner with other departments here at Lewis where we have interdisciplinary studies going on and these were studies that were funded by the Doherty Center for Aviation and Health Research and where we partnered with chemistry. Uh, Dr. Jason Kelleher, our department chair for chemistry, was very involved in the leaded fuel study to look at uh, this alternative fuel that Swift Enterprises, Swift Fuels, uh, had proposed as a replacement fuel for 100 low lead. As many people know, in the automobile industry, we were able to go to an unleaded gasoline for our cars because we realized in the 1970s, the effect of tetraethyl lead or TEL uh, has a negative health effect for people in the environment. And so we moved to an unleaded fuel for automobiles. However, the high performance engines that we find in general aviation aircraft require a higher octane fuel and the octane level we use in aviation is 100 octane. And to stabilize this octane effect, the tetraethyl lead acts as a stabilizer for to uh, run these high performance engines. And that's why Swift Fuels started looking at an alternative fuel that they're developing and that they're going through the process of getting approved uh, by governmental agencies, by societies, so that that fuel could be what we call a drop-in replacement fuel for aviation. In aviation, it's very important that whatever alternative fuel we come up with meets the performance specifications for our aircraft engines. Uh, kind of a live or die situation. We need the engine to run and we have to have a proven alternative for the current leaded fuel uh, known as 100 low lead. And these are two research studies that are uh, published from Lewis University in recent years and we're continuing to look at studies in aviation where we can support this movement towards an unleaded fuel alternative for aviation. And we'll continue our partnership with Swift Fuels and uh, continue doing some testing here at the university to find this alternative. Uh, in fact, we're looking now at uh, uh, biofuels that may be used for jet aircraft and uh, proposing a study for that in the future. So uh, very interested in this aspect of uh, alternative fuels for aviation. Uh, the university itself 
uh, very concerned and very supportive of finding uh, positive uh, environmental alternatives for transportation as a whole. Here at the university, we have had for uh, quite a while charging stations for electric vehicles. So the support from the university to look at environmentally friendly uh, aspects for transportation. And here in aviation, we're keying on the aviation aspects of uh, looking at these alternative fuels for both general aviation aircraft, piston engine airplanes that burn leaded fuel, and also possible biofuels for sustainability for the jet airplanes that burn jet A fuel.